whenever you're ready, Cam, we can. Yeah. So we have Kimmy Fado, Kaylee Flock, Rochelle McLeod, Sting, Brody, Scully, Rodriguez, Dobos. Perfect. That's line up. All right. Their line up is good. For the first time in 335 days, baseball on the South Hill. Ithaca College Bombers return to Valsenti Diamond at Freeman Field for the first time since May of 2023 as they get set to take on the St. John Fisher Cardinals. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the sunny South Hill. Rarity here on the 1st of April. Tobias Bore, Cam Mana along with you for today's broadcast and Cam. Two teams in a bit of opposite directions. The Bombers, they started this season really well. Now they're riding a bit of a win streak. So is St. John Fisher, but they started a little bit rocky coming into today's game. Yeah, well, they have won four straight, and, you know, big time on the Bombers' side is their conference play, the way they've been able to start out five straight wins in a three-game sweep against St. Lawrence. But both teams come into an unusual Monday game on April Fool's, and you think, you know, maybe an April Fool's joke to have this game here, but perfectly said it, completely sunny, great game for baseball. Absolutely, as the weather ahead doesn't look too great. But for today, that's not a problem as these teams get set on the St. John Fisher side. Their lineup will run Jake Krantz up first. He'll be followed by Nick Lemire, Brian Norson following in third, James Murphy batting in the cleanup role. Dominique Gucha batting in fifth, followed by Brennan Bussello. Matthew Arnold bats seventh, followed by Benjamin Huckins and Jimmy McCradle. And for the Bombers, it's Danny Drotos getting his first career start, the first year lefty out on the mound, and he'll face a talented St. John Fisher lineup that, as you said, Cam, won four in a row, riding hot into this game after a rough spring break trip. And a really heart of the order there, and you look at what Brian Norson's been able to do, 427 hitter, he gets on base, 24 ribbies, that their ability to set him up in the three-hole is their bread and butter. Well, it's Jake Krantz, the righty to lead off as the first pitch is going to be high in there for a strike and a good start for the Bombers, it's 0-1. Drodos, as we mentioned, his first start of the year. He's appeared in three games for the Bombers. As the 0-1 is going to be a liner to third, a good pick by the Bombers. On to first from Nate Rodriguez in time, and there's an out. And for Rodriguez, a late addition into the lineup. It was supposed to be Brody at third, McDonough at second, and Rodriguez put it to that spot. Limited appearances, but a nice play stabbing that one hopper right at third. As now, the Cardinals bring up Nate, Nick Lemaire. As the first pitch you'll see from Drotos is taken well high of the lettering. Bombers in their all-white Ithaca uniforms with the blue caps. Fisher in the yellow uniforms and gray pants. 1-0 right over the heart of the plate, and it's 1-1. One one. Lemire hitting 347 on the season with four doubles coming into today's game as the 1 1 is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop, Ethan Rothstein. Off Rothstein on to first pick. Good job in time. Out number two. What a play there from Rothstein towards the backhand. His ability at shortstop. It's something that we've talked about, Toby, especially early on in the season. The air troubles for the Bombers. They had seven this past weekend. They came into the first two games set of the year, making eight combined in a double header. So nice to see the infield side cleaning up. When the Bombers have succeeded, errors have not been a factor, and right there, big play to set the defense down as the first pitch is outside to Brian Norson. You were mentioning him, Cam, earlier. Norson, the big righty, hitting 427 on the season. As that one's going to be a strike, it's one and one. Norson, with three home runs on the year, has provided power in the three hole for the Cardinals. The 1-1 one, one is going to be a high fly ball into the outfield. Calling everybody off, though, is the left fielder, Fabo, and he will make the grab to end the first inning. Quick 1-2-3 for the Bombers, and that will bring us to the bottom half of the first. No damage against the first year. Now we'll see the Bombers' bats come to action.
bottom of inning number one. Bombers get a quick one, two, three in the top half, and now we move on. For Ithaca, it'll be Colin Feeney to lean off. He'll be followed by Luis Fabo, Matt Curtis, Ryan Lobsher, Colin Shashati, Ethan Rothstein, Riley Brody, Logan Scully, and Nate Rodriguez, the late scratch as the third baseman. They will be facing Tanner Frank, making his fifth start this season for the Cardinals as the first pitch is outside for ball one on to Colin Feeney. Frank has showed great command, although a 5 ERA. He's walked just nine batters to 21 strikeouts. The 1 is going to be a hot line drive to right center field, moving back the outfield as that's going to be down and onto the warning track. Rounding first is Feeney. He'll go into second. A stand-up double as he moves back to the bag. What a start for the Bombers. A rocket into the gap. And the speed of Colin Feeney and early on in this season, struggling with that lefty swing, but has been able to get it going. And that was just third double of the season. Maybe had a chance to stretch it to three, but a great job driving to the gap early on in the count. And that'll bring a runner in scoring position for Luis Fabo already as the Bombers try to hop on the righty in Tanner Frank. Frank allowed 25 hits after that big double into the gap. Fabo waits. First pitch he'll take is down and away for ball one. Fabo is entering today, 197 career hits. He is only three away from 200. If Fabo reaches that mark, that would make him the fifth bomber to ever do it. Trying to achieve that today as that one skips away in the other batter's box all the way down to third is Feeney. They can't find it by the plate. Matthew Arnold can't locate the baseball, and by the time he grabs it in to score is Colin Feeney. A wild pitch and an error. Bombers lead 1-0. It's a big backstop back there, but if you're Frank on the bump in the whole entire infield, you have to communicate with Arnold. You can't have a, a second-to-home wild pitch pass ball result in a run. And we saw the same thing. The Bombers got lucky on that last weekend. A pass ball wild pitch was able to score a run, and they get that same luck again this week as the 2-0 is right over the plate for a strike. It's 2-1. and one. Where the team will benefit from that in back-to-back -back weeks, and the Bombers take full advantage. That's now the 2-0 to Fabo. Swing, and that ball is rocketed into right field. That's going to move back. Huckins, and he'll have room to make the catch. Started in, then moved back, and there's out number one. Strong swing from Fabo. Just got a little bit jam-shotted on the inside fastball there from Frank, and he talked about it. Frank's ability, he can pound the zone. It's once the bats get going and they get comfortable with his timing, that's where he struggles. And now it'll be Matthew Curtis, the designated hitter in today's contest. One out, the run already home for the Bombers in a 1-0 game. First home game at Freeman Field of the 2024 season as Curtis takes that one inside for a ball. It's 1-0. Nearly wore that one off the shins. Frank looks in, trying to settle down after the lineout. That pitch is high, and it gets away from Matthew Arnold, so it's 2-0. Curtis, second highest average on the team coming into today's game at 369. So they slot him in the three hole. That ball is ripped foul behind the backstop, and it's two and one. And he had such a phenomenal freshman season, what he was able to do in his limited appearance at the DH spot, but he's been centered into that three hole, and he's done so well. He'll stand up tall in the box as he waits for the two one. That one right at the lettering, and it's two and two. Good location by Frank as it's rare that he falls behind in the count now even with one out. Swing and a miss from Matthew Curtis, the first strikeout for either side of this ball game, and it's against Curtis, two gone for Ryan Lobsher. A really good pitch there from Frank going to the off speed on the two-strike pitch. Curtis out in front, and a nice job from Frank. You let Feeney on, you have that wild pitch, the miscommunication, you put the next two batters down. Yeah, you mentioned after... Rough start off the first two batters. He is now settled down, and there are two out, nobody on, for the cleanup man in Lobshire, who takes it right off the plate, and it's 0-1. A beautiful pitch by Frank to locate. As that one caught the outside. 0-1. First time Frank's been ahead in the count, and that one just misses, so it's 1-1. One one. One one lobster. It's a line drive. That's going to be fair over the bag at third. Nowhere to go as Gucha tries to find it down the line. Lobster's going to pull into second with the double, and 
Gucci just puts his hands up as he can't get it underneath the tarp. But a double, two doubles in the inning for the Bombers. Runner at second, two out for Colin Shashati. And Lobster coming off a big weekend with two long balls against St. Lawrence. Seen the ball really well. A rope down the line. And now a big spot here for the Bombers to take two here in bottom one. Bombers have hit Frank hard in this inning. Thiemi, the double into the gap. Then Favo hit that loud line drive to right field and that a shot right over the bag and down the line eventually getting caught as now Shashati steps in. Hitting 297 this year and stepping off is Frank as walking back is Ryan Lobsher. A conversation between Bombers head coach Dave Valsenti and the infield umpire. As those two will move away from each other. He gets set for play to resume. Much of that conversation had anything to do with the double down the line and how it went out of the tarp. You wonder if he was saying maybe the right the left fielder Gucha could have actually dug it out as that one's off the plate, it's one and zero. As Lobsher holds down at second. With two outs, Bombers already a run across here in the first inning thanks to the wild pitch in the air behind the plate. Frank will go home. That ball is going to be chopped into the ground for the shortstop play to make for Lemaire. Lemaire on to first beautiful throw, charges in on the ball and ends the first inning. Bombers jump on the board first with some hard hits. They get a run across. They will lead one to nothing as we head to the top of inning number two right here from Valsenti Diamond at Freeman Field. Bombers take a 1-0 lead to the top of the second inning. Tobias Abore, Cam Mana along with you here for Bomber Baseball. First home game of the season at Freeman Field. Bombers have played two in Ithaca. Both of them were over at the new Booth Field at Cornell. As St. John Fisher will bring their cleanup man to the plate. James Murphy after the 1-2-3 inning from the first year, Danny Drodos. The lefty's first pitch is going to be chopped foul along the third baseline. Rodriguez will watch it roll. And a strong first inning for Drodos, just pitching to the zone, attacking and moving quick on the mound, trying to get in his groove and work at that rhythm. Drodos will kick and fire the 0-1. That ball is going to be hit on a line to center field. Now moving back is Colin Feeney, and he will settle exactly where he is for out number one. First hard hit ball of the day against the Bombers, and it was right at Colin Feeney as the wind kicks up a little bit today, blowing in from left field off the lake. As Domini Gucha, the left fielder, will come in. Hitting 255 on the year. As he takes that one for a strike and it's immediately 0-1. Drotos pounding strikes early in counts as the 0-1 is going to be a ground ball on the third base side. Will stay fair along the bag, kicks foul. That one went foul just before crossing over the bat and that's lucky for Rodriguez as it kicked off the heel of his glove into shallow left. And smart there for Rodriguez charging that baseball because if he decided not to touch it and then that trickles fair, that's going to roll down the line and towards the bullpen, maybe extra base hit. So you have to make up your mind quick there. Smart call to try to come out and grab it, but no matter what, it rolled foul. Now it's 0-2. As that one will be just off the plate, make it 1-2, and two, as you said. Rodriguez, a late scratch in this ballgame. He came in for the Bombers and already has made 
a great defensive play and right there a good mental play as that one will catch the plate. First strike out of the day for Drotos and there are two gone in the second. What a start for Danny Drotos. First five men retired as Brendan Bacello will come up. Bacello on the first pitch he will take and that's a strike it's 0-1. Drotos finding the zone once again. Another 0-1 count from the left-handed first year. As that one is just off the plate, so it goes to 1-1. One and one. Bacello hits that one on a line right to the leaping shortstop, Ethan Rothstein, who makes a little bit of a jump, gets the third out. A hot line drive into the glove, and once again, another 1-2-3 inning for Drotos. We make our way to the bottom of inning number two. Bombers still on top, one nothing. Another 1-2-3 inning for Bombers pitching as they take it to the bottom of the second. A 1-0 Ithaca lead, and the Bombers will bring the 6-7-8 man off the plate as Ethan Rothstein will start us off. He'll be followed by Riley Brody and Logan Scully, the catcher. Rothstein getting ready. He's leading the Bombers in batting average on the season at 4-13. Dominant start to the year. And he chops the first one off the plate, rolling off towards that third base dugout at zone one. And really coming into the St. Lawrence weekend, he was batting 437. And Coach Valicente loves to have Rothstein at times in this 6 7 hole in the lineup to see more fastballs earlier in the count. The 0 1, that one is smoked out to right field. It will move back Huckins, and he will look for it in the sun. Has to take a step in, but does glove it for out number one. That sun so far has played a factor a little bit in right center field. And right after the play as well, McCardle and Huckins were both talking and looking up towards the sun. So that could be a factor in the early innings of this game. Yeah, this mid-afternoon game here in Ithaca. And right now the sun still shining at this time as that one's going to be a little bit inside to Brody who has to jump back. 0-1 the count. As the game goes on, it should play less of a factor. But as you said right there, McCardle and Huckins discussing it in the middle outfield as that one is a strike. It's one and one. Frank trying to settle down after a rough start to the first inning. That ball is going to be hit in the air to left field. Gucha will move back. He's looking for it, and that one will drop into his glove, out number two. Two fly outs to start the second inning. Both of them land harmlessly in the outfielder's gloves. As that'll bring up Logan Scully, the catcher, for his first at bat of the day's ball game. As the first pitch, Scully hits that one on the ground. Gonna be playable for the shortstop, Lemaire. Bobbles it, throw onto first, not dug out of the dirt. Lemaire tried to play it quick, had a tough time bringing it out of his hand into the glove, threw it on and just down to the dirt. Norris. Couldn't make a play on it, and a runner on with two outs. What a play from Lemaire, and it looks like they'll give the error to the first baseman in Norson, but Lemaire coming in, bobbled, as, he's, as you said, Toby, but with his throwing hand, and he held on to the baseball, a scoop that is playable there for Norson, couldn't hold on. As now to the nine-hole hitter, it's Nate Rodriguez. 
He takes it high for a strike. It's 0-1. Two outs and a runner on, thanks to the error on Norson, who couldn't glove it out of the dirt. And stepping off is Tanner Frank to look back, Logan Scully. Frank now sets up again. His 0-1 pitch is a bit inside, and backing up is Rodriguez to make it 1-1. One and one. Taking his lead is Scully. No attempted steals on the season, but certainly watching them are the Cardinals as that one was inside for a two and one count. And immediately after catching it, Arnold stood up and looked the runner back. Two one, two out, runner on first after the error. Nine hole hitter up for the Bombers. That one is gonna be hit down the right field line, moving over and foul. So it goes to two and two. And we've not seen Frank use his off speed too often so far. He's not been in a lot of two strike counts. Had that one strikeout to Curtis that came on the only really off speed we've seen. Two, two, two outs, runner on first. And he's gonna check the runner at first, tag, not in time. Getting back safely is Logan Scully. As Scully drawing first pickoff attempt of today's game for either side. Still 2-2. That ball is going to be golfed down into center field. Playable for McCradle. He will move in and catch it off to his side. Inning over. Bombers get a runner on. Thanks to the ear. Nothing doing. No damage done. We'll move to the third inning. Still 1-0 your score. Bombers on top. Fifty-two is sunny here on the South Hill for the Bombers home opener here on April first. No Fool's Day. The Bombers playing baseball from Freeman Field against a former Empire Eight foe in St. John Fisher. Alongside Toby Zabore, I'm Cam Manna with you. The Bombers in front here in the top of the third, one to nothing. After Colin Feeney in the first inning had a double, came around and scored on a wild pitch. And Danny Drodos, the freshman here on the bump at a Fordham Prep, third inning of work. Has faced the minimum so far. He'll face Matthew Arnold, Benjamin Huckins, and Jimmy McCradle to finish off here in their bottom three of the order. Lefty on lefty, Drodos from the windup. First pitch is the off speed outside. And for Arnold so far this season, doing the catching, 250 hitter, one double, and two RBIs. He has the wide stance, 1 0 pitch. Fastball dips low, 2 0. And first time we've seen Drodos not locate in this game, first two innings. Real good accuracy right now. Just got to work back in that count. He gets set from the third base side of the rubber. 2-0 pitch down Main Street. And on the season for Drodos, three appearances. This is his fourth. Had an 8.53 ERA, but Toby and I alluded to it. It's been the control at times as the 2-1 comes in. Now 3-1, missing the fastball. Yeah, five walks, five strikeouts entering today's ball game. Has one strikeout so far that came in the second inning. Here's the 3-1 pitch. He fires, wave and a miss. Arnold out in front of the off speed, makes it 3-2, and two, and a chance here for Drodos to work back. And his pitch mix today has been really good. He's done well battling in these counts to get guys chasing. He gets sent, glove with the face, the high leg kick. 3-2, swing and a miss. There's punch out number two on the afternoon for the freshman. And there's one away. Yeah, big strikeout for him. Second of the ball game. First one came against Gucha. 
then on Arnold, and now you've got Huckins coming up a strikeout magnet. He's got 23 coming into today's ball game. The righty's batting 169, playing right field this afternoon. As the wide stance, first pitch is low. And then McCradle to follow, who's batting 235. So the bottom of this Fisher order has given them trouble on this early season. 1-0 pitch, line drive, left center field. Feeney comes in in center. It will bounce down for a base hit. And the first hit for the Cardinals here in this one comes to Huckins, who we just said, 169 hitter. Maybe a one-out rally brewing here for the away team. Yeah, and for the Cardinals, if they can get their bat bottom of the order bats really to shine in today's ball game, that's a good sign against the Bombers. As you alluded to, the top of the order has been phenomenal. They just haven't had much production from the seven through nine hitters. You want to see them produce today against the first year. Here's the second lefty to sitting in McCradle. Narrow stance back of the box. First pitch as a fastball from the stretch from Drodos. And as you said, Toby, this Cardinals team looking to get their offense going, batting 296 as a team. They've heated up as of late in their last four wins all in a row. 0-1 pitch here from Drodos is up and outside. Not a big threat to seal is Huckins. He's a two-step lead at the bag. Lobster holding him on. Drodos looks over. Now to the plate. Wave and a miss. Leaning out in front was McCradle. Makes the count one and two. Yeah, and he was looking for a different pitch in that zone right there. He just went way out in front. Just kind of flailed the bat. And for Drodos, that's exactly what you want to keep throwing. Middle infield pinching, 1-2 pitch, line drive, deep right field, going back is Shoshani in front of the warning track, battling the sun, the ball drops down. Advancing to second base is Huckins, McCradle to first, and it was Huckins not too far off the back, so he only gets one base, but we just said it last inning, the sun was almost a problem for the Cardinals, and Shoshani going back on a long fly ball, and then lost it towards his backhand, now first and second, one away, and now the top of the order for the Cardinals. Yeah, and they're going to rule that a hit probably because of the way that Sun is playing. We saw Huckins and McCradle, the left and the center and right fielders, excuse me, talking about the Sun in the last half. Here's the leadoff guy, Jake Krantz, from the righties batter's box. Fouls this one off in the box. That middle infield will still pinch here for the Bombers, but Jashadi is strong glove, one that he wants back. So McCradle off first, Huckins off second, one away, a 1-0 Bombers lead. Top of the third inning, and a chance here for St. John Fisher to strike for Jake Krantz. Drotto sets from the stretch. The pitch, ground ball, first base side, rolls into right field for a base hit. Rounding third base is Huckins. Shoshani's throw to the plate. This one is not in time. An RBI single for Jake Krantz. His ninth ruby of this season ties this game up at one here in the top of the third. Snuck it by the glove of Lobster right into right field. And that's what you get when you get the bottom of the order producing. You set up this top of the order for Fisher, which has been so dominant, as we mentioned, all of today. Now you give him a chance. Warns up the corners. One out. A chance to take a lead. And brings up Nick LaMare. Ground out to shorten his first at bat. 347 hitter. That's third on the team in a big RBI spot. We said Drodos, his first two innings, two one two threes, Has one out here by a strikeout, first and third. He sets from the stretch, high leg kick, fastball driven up the middle, past Rothstein's glove, and into center field. And St. John Fisher in front. Nick LaMare, RBI 13 on the year. And a big spot for this Cardinals squad on the road coming through when it matters most here in top three. Four hits in a row for the Cardinals and Cam. We were talking about it between the last half innings. How Drodis was kind of getting hammered on those pitches. He had good numbers, but right then it was only a matter of time before Fisher was able to figure him out. And now that they have, they've got a rally going. And Brian Norson, the guy you want to see, the tall righty batting 427. First pitch to him is an off speed, dips below the knees. Now the rhythm screwed up for Drodos, and it's been the first pitch strikes early on was his bread and butter. Have not seen that since. First and second, 2 1 Cardinals on a 1 0 count with 1 away. From the belt. 1-0 pitch is outside, now 2-0. Brody and Rothstein still pinching up the middle. It's Kranz at second base. And Lemaire at first, Norson in the box here. The narrow, tall righty stance. A 2-0 delivery, ground ball could be two. Rothstein glove grab, flips to second for one. Brody on to first, 6-4-3. And that's a way to get out of a jam if you're Danny Drodos, the freshman. He allows two on four hits here in top three, but stops the bleeding. And after two and a half here from Freeman Field, St. John Fisher in front two to one. Bottom three in the Bombers' bats. Come your way next here on Bomber Sports.
Moving along quickly here on this Monday afternoon, it's bottom three from Freeman Field. The Bombers home opener here in 2024. They were in front until top three. St. John Fisher said, we'll take two runs. They're in front two to one on four hits and an RBI from Jake Krantz and Nick Lemaire. Tanner Frank, the righty back of the bump. He'll face the top of the order. Colin Feeney for the second time. First pitch fastball in the dirt. And Feeney, that only run so far, had the leadoff double. A scorcher to right center field. Scored on a wild pitch on two backs. Frank's 1-0. Feeney shows bunt, pulls back. It's a called ball, 2-0. 315 hitter is Feeney. He's been at the top of this order. Stolen bases has six on nine attempts. Frank, long leg kick, comes in with the pitch. This one a called strike. Feeney showed bunt once again, pulled back the last second. Babo and Curtis to follow the heart of this Bombers order all season so far. 2-1. And a late swing and a miss there from Feeney on an outside fastball, 2-2. Two two. One strikeout so far for Frank, looking to make it two. Comes with a quick pitch. 2-2 two -two pitch, blooped out left center field. Coming in and left is Gucha. He cannot make the grab. And Feeney bloops one in for his second hit of the afternoon. As you mentioned there, Kim, yeah, two for two on Colin Feeney. He's got speed. That's exactly who you want on first base in this scenario. That first one was a score for the second one. Just a little loop to get out in front of it, dunk it into center field. And for the Bombers, you need a rally. That's how you start it. That in and out swing on an inside fastball gives way to Lewis Fabo, the left fielder batting 324. First pitch to the righty, a deep drive to left field. Gucho going back, track, wall, in front of the wall, drops down for a hit. Rolls against the base of it. Feeney gets the wave at third base and falls down to third base. Favo's caught between second and third. The throw to second from left field is in time. Oh, man. So the shortstop in Lemaire cut off the throw from left field from Gucha. He wanted to go to home plate, but Feeney fell down between third and home, went back to third, and then Favo got caught between second and third to end what would have been an RBI double. So one away. Feeney still at third, brings up Matt Curtis. And that's a huge way to partially get out of the jam. Still a runner at third, but instead of two on, no out, it's one on, one out. That play was wild from the start. As you mentioned, Gucha fell down at the track. Wind likely kept that one in. First pitch of the righty, Curtis is a breaking ball outside. What a play, though, from Lemaire to have that patience at the cutoff spot. Faked at third, saw Feeney fall, went to Fabo at second. 1 0 to Curtis, once again, dips low and outside. Yeah, all eyes were on Feeney halfway between third and home as he was tripping. No one was watching second base. Still a fourth hit for the Bombers. Fabo gets a double, but then called out. From the windup is Frank. 2-0 pitch. This one, just the letters there to Curtis, makes it 2-1. St. John Fisher in front, 2-1 here at bottom three. Feeney 90 feet away, the tying run with one away. Frank sets. Pitch to Curtis, out in front on the off speed. And we're even at twos. And he wanted to put that one in the air somewhere in the outfield, anything that would have driven Feeney home. Franks, 2-2 two -two pitch, swing and a miss. Curtis goes down swinging for the second time this afternoon, and just like that, St. John Fisher and Tanner Frank, one out away from working out of what was a big jam. Yeah, and Curtis there tried to power something into the outfield, just an opportunity to get Feeney home. Couldn't make contact as he was focused on that power, and now Lobsher comes in after a double, trying to get something and tie this game. The righty first baseman digs in, first pitch in the dirt. Lobsher 13 RBIs on this season. Had two home runs this past weekend in the three-game sweep over St. Lawrence. Frank back to the windup, a long look in at Arnold for the sign. 1-0 pitch. Low and outside once again. Arnold couldn't clip it on the frame. But Feeney started this inning, did his job. Got that single move to third. But just like that, two men down, one on the base paths. Two at a lobster. This one low in the dirt on the off speed. And Frank pitching away here from the cleanup hitter as College's Shaddy waits on deck. Yeah, and you get the strategy here. Double earlier in this ball game by Lobster. He'd rather face Shashati, but Shashati's still a good hitter to try and pitch around to face. 3-0. Take sign for Lobster. It's a called strike. And Frank went to the off speed. So 3-1, 2 away. Feeney 90 feet away. Cardinals in front by one. 
3-1 pitch, back to the plate. Lobster, ground ball right side, picked up at second from Kranz. Throw to first is in time, and that ends the inning. So two hits for the Bombers, but Fabo caught on the base paths as Feeney fell down at third, ends the threat. St. John Fisher still in front of Ithaca, 2-1 to one after three here from Freeman Fields. A 2-1 St. John Fisher lead as we head to the top of the fourth inning here from Freeman Field. 52 and sunny, some wind coming in for some Monday baseball to kick off a long week. The Bombers will play three over the weekend against RIT, one on the road, and the weekend set at home. Danny Drodos back of the bump here for his fourth inning of work. 4-5-6 in order. James Murphy, the righty, first man he'll see. And the first pitch, an off-speed, clips the outside corner for a strike. Gucha and Bacello to follow in the order here for St. John Fisher. 0-1, backs Murphy away. Yeah, and one thing to watch with Drodos right now, he's getting the ball, getting the sign, and immediately pitching it. No time in between. He loves that quick pitch. Back to the plate, 1-1. This one above the Fisher logo at the letters. Murphy, a 368 hitter, second on the team. His 19th game started, has started all of them so far this year. Drodos 2-1, big hack and a big miss from Murphy on the heater. Makes it 2-2. Two two. Murphy was looking for home run number three on the season there. Something to really pound into the gap. Couldn't find it. And Drodos put him down. 2-2, two -two, goes to the changeup, bounces in the dirt, and blocked by Scully. Murphy's first at bat, a line out to center on a very hard hit ball of Drodos. Got a fastball just right at Feeney. 3-2 to the leadoff man in Murphy here in top four. Here's the pitch, grounded up the middle. Shading over at second is Brody. Makes the backhanded grab, throws to first, and gets Murphy by a step. So the infield so far for the Bombers, we talked about it, Toby. The errors were a problem, but not an error so far. A lot of clean plays up the middle for out number one. And that was a really good play by Brody. That was a hard ground ball, and he kind of had to move to his other side. Speared it really well, took his time, though, settled his feet, and made a nice throw. Here's the righty Dominic Gucha, righty on lefty. First pitch, way out in front. Leaning on that left leg on the off speed that Drodos has shown, he'll throw on an OL. Drodos set once again. Third base side of the rubber from the windup. 0 1 pitch. This one clips low. Gucha 0 for 1 so far. One of the two strikeouts. He went down looking back in the second. 1 1 pitch. Check swing. They check down. He went around. Makes it a 1 and 2 count as Drodos back in a groove after 2 1 2 3 innings. But then two runs in the third. Looking to put down Gucha here. High leg kick, the one-two pitch. Inside corner, fastball, he got him. So Gucha goes down looking for the second time. Third punch out for Drodos, and there's two away. And when Drodos has been on today, he has been barely touchable to some of those pitches he's thrown have been right in the zone to hit. That's the thing about a first-year pitcher. He's figuring it out, but today's a good sign and a step forward in the right direction. Brendan Busella digs in, called strike, Drodos back in the zone. That's the difference too, Toby. First pitch strikes. Didn't see that from Drodos in the third. We've seen it here in the fourth. Back to the plate on the 0-1. Fastball dips low and outside. Busello doing the DHing. Only three hits so far early on in the year, batting 214. 1-1 one, one pitch. This one low and inside. 2-1. and one. But Drodos first start. His fourth appearance as a freshman in a big spot here on a Monday game that was slated in. 
2-1 pitch, goes outside, and a 3-1 count. Also, no walks so far for Drodo. Said five coming in on five strikeouts. But going to work back here on Busello. 3-1 pitch, low one outside. Schooley can't get the frame, and it's a two-out walk for the Cardinals, and the catcher, Matthew Arnold, will step in. And for Joyce, he's faced a couple of three ball counts in today's game, but before then was able to battle back and all of them right there, just lost it on a pitch down and in. Arnold struck out in his first at-bat, so Drodo's kind of hoping to move back to that way. Lefty on lefty here in favor of Drodos. Arnold went down swinging to begin the third and what looked like another groove. Drodos leans over at the first base bag. Basella with a two-step lean. Here's the first pitch to Arnold. Fastball down Main Street. 250 hitter for Arnold. Busello in the bag is not a big threat to steal. Now just a one and a half step lead as Lobster holds him on. Drodos to look over. High leg kick. 0-1 pitch. Check swing did not go around. Scully got out of the squat position and blocked that baseball to hold on. Busello at the first base bag. And a great job by Scully behind the plate. They're reading it out of the dirt, getting his frame right in front of it knocking it down and holding the runner on. Drodos pick over to first base. First time we've seen his move. Bussell will back safely. 1-1 one, one count, two away, runner on here as St. John Fisher's in front of the Bombers, 2-1 here in top four. Drodos, first base, first base out of the rubber. His pitch here, this one, a called strike, and it looked like as well, Arnold went around. So a 1-2 count here, a chance for Drodos to work out of the inning. And keep it where it is at 2-1. to one. He sets. The Bombers dug out with the claps. The pitch, outside corner, got him, strike three. Off speed to perfection on the lower half from Drodos. His fourth punch out to this inning, and that will end the threat here in the top of the fourth. One base runner, no hits, and no runs for St. John Fisher. The Bombers trail by one. We'll head to bottom four here from Freeman Field. Baseball on April Fool's Day here from the South Hill as we head to bottom four between St. John Fisher and Ithaca, two Empire 8 foes back in the day. And the Bombers trail by one here. They'll bring five, six, seven to the plate. Colin Jashani, Ethan Rothstein, and Riley Brody to um As Danny Drodos in top four put two down via the backwards K to work out of the jam and keep it where it is. Tanner Frank back in the bump. The righty's first pitch is low and outside. Shashadi 0 for 1 so far. Ground out to Lemaire at shortstop. That came back in the first. 1 0 pitch. This one in the zone. Now 1 and 1 to the senior outfielder. Shashadi also batting 297, the captain of this team. 1 1 pitch. Hard ground ball at third. Glove grab from Murphy on an 8. Throws to first. And it's in time for out number 1. And both infields to begin, Toby, have been stellar. Yeah, and for the Bombers, we talked about that plenty was a question mark coming into this game. But Fisher, 21 errors coming into this ball game. They haven't necessarily been spotless, but right now both teams have been fantastic. Only one error, and that was on a questionable pick out of the dirt from Fisher. Good game so far, and none of the errors have come back to haunt them. As Ethan Rothstein digs in, first pitch to the right, he's low and outside. Rothstein, the other captain, leader in average, batting 413. 
0 for 1 so far. As Frank delivers from the windup on the 1-0, off speed back in the zone this time, evens it at one apiece. And Frank's gone to that off speed a lot so far. Walks have not been his problem this year, 21 Ks to five double Bs. 1-1 one, one pitch, comes back to this slider, low and outside, not framed from Arnold, makes it two and one. Yeah, Arnold just kinda yanked that one back up into the zone, not as subtle as you'd want a frame job to be to get a strike call. Frank looking to work back, 2-1 pitch, lined that short, and a diving play from Lemaire. Lemaire went to his left side, back to his right, made the glove grab, going down to the dirt, and robs Rothstein of a hit, and a quick two outs here for Tanner Frank and the Cardinals. And you said a great job by Lemaire, going to his right, falling, and still able to snag that one out of the sky. Gives Brody Nunn on with two outs. Here's the lefty Brody, first pitch, high fly ball to right field. Stays up in the air with the wind. Huckins comes over, makes the backhanded grab, and falls into his center fielder in McCradle. Well, that will end the inning. So three solid pieces of contact for the Bombers, but Frank, his first one, two, three of the afternoon, and after four here from the South Hill, St. John Fisher with a 2-1 lead over the Bombers. Top five from Freeman Field as Grotos back out there on the mound. His fifth inning of work already, four strikeouts in the game. Still facing a 2-1 deficit. Toby Zabore, Cam Mana along with you for the Bombers. Home opener from Valsenti Diamond as they will face the 8-9-1 men for the Cardinals. Coming up is Benjamin Huckins with one out. This was the part of the order that started the rally in the third inning that gave the Cardinals the lead as Huckins takes one inside, it's 1-0. and oh. Grotos working the pitch. As he quick pitches again, that one is chopped foul towards the tarp, and it goes 1-1. One and one. And he's moved extremely quickly, and really the, the key for him is those first pitch strikes, once he's in front, he gets back on the bump and in such a quick rhythm. As the 1-1 one, one is going to be in the dirt right in front of the plate, so he moves to 2-1. and one. Bombers have someone stretching down by the whole pen. As Grotto still moving strong in his fifth inning of work. 2-1 is going to be skied up. Shallow outfield moving over is Brody. Brody comes in and he will make the catch out number one. And that will bring up Jimmy McCradle. And nice there for Drotos to get that first guy down. We were able to see that in the third First man down via the K was Arnold, but he's, as you said, Toby, Huckins had that single, came around and scored and started that two-run rally. And so far, Dredos has retired the first batter he has faced in every inning today. As now it's the nine-hitter, McCradle. He takes that one high by the helmet. It's 1-0. and That's the first infield pop-up of today's game. A couple of steps beyond that lip of the grass. As the 1-0, an off-speed swing by McCradle. Had him moving out of his shoes. Goes to one and one. The lefty quick and fire. That one is chopped towards the backstop, so it goes to one and two. Another early two strike count from the lefty Dredos. That's exactly what the Bombers coaching staff wants to see after a long weekend from the pitchers. 
One, two, taken, strike three, called off the plate. Good job by Dredos to locate McCradle. Watched it right at the edge. Fifth strikeout of the game for Dredos, already matching his season total in today's contest. Back to the top of the order, and Jake Krantz. And multiple of these so far, three have been via the backwards K. Krantz will watch that one hit in the dirt. He has to move out of the way. So it goes to 1-0. and oh. Krantz, an RBI single back in the third in his last at-bat. That drove in what was the tying run. As after that, though, it has been a clean affair, save for one walk from Drodos, who has settled down after that rough third inning. 1-0 to the top of the order with two outs. It's fouled off the plate, so it's 1-1. One and one. And the big thing for Drodos, too, is, you know, we talked about coming in, being able to pound the zone. He's pounding the zone and letting the infield at times work, which he's gotten help from. 1-1 one, one taken for a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. He went to the off-speed there. To get Krantz looking already. Five strikeouts, looking for number six. 1-2. Foul tip into the glove, strike three, and there's the out. Foul tip, got him to go. Another 1-2-3 inning, the third of the day for Drodos as we move on to the bottom of the fifth. Bombers down by one. Bottom five, Bombers will go 8-9-1 with Scully, Rodriguez, and Feeney due up. Down 2-1 to one here against St. John Fisher. Back on the bump is Tanner Frank, who has shoved so far to this point after a rough first inning and a bit of a scare in the third. He has settled down completely. Last inning was his first 1-2-3 of the contest. And a big spot here for the Bombers, too, to get their first batter on. We've not seen those leadoff base runners come on since that third inning with Feeney, but then not the smart base running from Fabo and Feeney. First pitch is going to be chopped off behind the backstop and heads off towards the lot. It's 0-1. Scully reached via the error earlier in the second inning and a ball Norson couldn't pick. That one is chopped foul off towards Valcenti as he tried to barehand it. Couldn't quite make the play in that coach's box, so it's 0-2. Small back pedal back, just had that little one hopper. 0-2, oh, nobody out on the leadoff man, Scully. That one is in the dirt in front of the plate, so it's one and two. And you know the whole lineup for the Bombers can produce, but the big questions are with Scully and Rodriguez playing, limited at ABs, what can they bring to the table? Their first... Real appearances of the season as that one's taken outside for a ball. It goes to two and two. You mentioned limited plate appearance coming in into today. Just seven at-bats for Scully. Not much tape on him for the Bombers. Two-two, nobody out. And he will take that one called strike three. Scully watches it in. The third strike out of the game for Tanner Frank. First one caught looking. And there's one man out for Nate Rodriguez. And the last five strikeouts for both teams combined have now all been backwards Ks. Four from Drodos, now that one for Frank. Both sides bat on the shoulders. The last few Ks, mostly on the St. John Fisher side, but now one for the Bombers. As Rodriguez, the third baseman, takes it a bit outside for a 1-0 and o count. He flew out to center field to end the second inning, and the Bombers fret in that frame. 1-0 a bit low and away. So it goes to two and zero. Oh. Rodriguez would like to work his way on for the top of the order that has produced so far for the Bombers. 
2-0, worked well away, and now it's 3-0. So far this season, Rodriguez has just one walk. Trying to make it two right here. With one out and nobody on, trailing by one in the fifth, he takes that one in for a strike, and it's 3-1. and one. And definitely have the stop sign there, the red lay on that pitch, either way up and inside. Now you're kind of still looking for that fastball from Frank. Never moved the bat off his shoulders, and now he will. And the 3-1 count takes it inside, and it's 3-2, and two, count full. Waiting on deck is Colin Feeney, who has gone 2-for-2 two two in today's contest, would like to have a man on. Full count, one out, Bombers trail by a run. Here's the payoff, swing and a miss. Well out in front of it is Rodriguez, back-to-back -back Ks for Frank, and there's two gone for Feeney in the top of the Bombers order. A lot of strikeouts here, once again, for both sides. That's a really good pitch, though. You go with the two straight fastballs. You kind of fool Rodriguez on what you're going to go with there, and he goes with that little off speed. That's Feeney, who's two for two on the day. He shows bunt, puts it down right in front. Playable for Frank. He'll bare hand onto first, not in time. That's the speed of Colin Feeney, a bunt single. His third hit of the ball game. The Bombers have a rally going with two outs and a man on for Luis Fabo. And smart there, you know, you think about it, two outs in the inning, you're not really going bunt often, but Murphy's playing about four to five steps off that infield grass. So Feeney said, if I could put this anywhere on that third base side, make Frank run, I could beat this out. Fabo doubled his last time up, but was picked off a second as part of that wild play. He takes it high for a strike. It's 0-1, much to the chagrin of the Bombers' dugout. He stepped out, now moves back in. The speed of Feeney on first. They will check him, no tag. Feeney certainly a threat in the mind of the Cardinals. As down by one, the Bombers would love to have him in scoring position with two outs. And they're going to check him again, but that one was well off the bag, too far to tag, and in plenty of time was Feeney. Feeney has stolen six bags on the year over nine attempts coming into today's ball game. As the 0-1 is a ground ball to third, going to take up a bit of a hop on Murphy, but he goes the short way to second, and the inning is over. Bombers threatened with two outs, but nothing goes. We move on to the sixth inning of work here, still a 2-1 Cardinals lead. Five innings of work for Danny Drodos, and he's back on the bump, top of the six. Bombers trailing 2-1 to one against St. John Fisher in what has been a pitcher's duel as the Cardinals will have 2-3-4 due up here in the sixth. The lefty, his first start as a collegiate pitcher, and he has done stunningly well so far. This is Nick Lemaire, one for two on the day with an RBI single, and he wears one off the side. First hit by pitch in today's contest and he'll work his way down to first, the seventh one that Lemaire has worn this season. And the first time there, where Rodos has not put the first batter down, every single inning we've seen, first batter down via the out, and that's the first leadoff base runner, and now in the heart of the order, not the right time where you want to see a runner on with Norse into the plate. As Ithaca will now get someone throwing from that bullpen on the home side, it's taken low for a ball, 1-0 and to Norsen. Norson grounded into a double play to end that third inning in his last time up. 
Farmers would love the same result here as the 1-0 is going to be taken in on the shins, and it's 2-1-1, and one and one, excuse me. A righty up in the Ithaca pen. Still nobody up for Fisher as both starters would like to go. A wild arrest. The bullpen swing and a miss. A healthy hack on by Norsen, and it's 1-2. and two. Norsen, the potent hitter, is 0 for 2 in today's game. Bombers have held him in check so far. A fly out and a ground out. The 1 2 went off speed and it goes low, so it's 2 and 2. And I have your Jodos here, and if you're Norsen, you're looking to fastball on a 2 2 count. That off speed not locating too much for Jodos this inning. 2 2 and a man at first. Swing and a miss, he got him. Ground out, fly out, strike out for Norsen. Another K on the day, the seventh for Drodos, and there's one gone. And a battle there between Drodos and Norsen, their top guy. Now with Murphy, another plus 350 hitter in a big spot. That middle infield pinching, you're really hoping for a ground ball. Murphy is 0 for 2. He grounded out to Brody his last time up. And he takes that one inside. Another one on a first pitch that almost gets away from Drodos, and it's 1-0. As you wonder in his sixth inning of work, with that pitch count rising, how much he'll have left in the tank. Check swing, but that one was up and inside. They do not go down, so it's 2-0. No appeal from the home plate umpire. The runner on first and one man out. Cardinals leading 2-1. 2-0, oh, that's right on the plate, and it's 2-1. Good pitch from the lefty Drodos to work back in the count with one man down. Infield still in double play depth. 2-1, that's going to be a little looper out in the left field. Now moving in and settling is Favo for out number two. And another great pitch there from Drodos. Middle of the count, a battle with Murphy. We saw with Norson just got him out in front of that low pitch, golfed it out to Favo. After that first leadoff base runner, you kind of wonder what was going to happen with Drodos, but he's bared down once again. And now it's Dominique Gucci, the righty, has been caught looking both times he's climbed into the batter's box, and he'll take one low and in for a ball. It's 1-0. One of the primary victims of Drodos was compiled four backwards Ks in today's game. Swing and a miss, and it's 1-1. One and one. Lefty looks in and sets up. His 1-1 one, one offering is a little bit inside, so it's 2-1. And, and you're two strikes away from getting your freshman in Drodos in his first start to get through six innings of work. How big would that be in a 2-1 game? With only two runs allowed, and if he can get out of this, seven strikeouts as it stands. 2-1, foul tip, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Especially after a weekend where you play three straight, you use ten pitchers. Crucial. 2-2, two, two, two out, runner on first. Seven strikeouts for Drodos. Here's the pitch. Ground ball over to shortstop. Rothstein's going to make a play. Top hop. Throw is wide. Runners hold as a top play for Ethan Rothstein. Had to move to the other side. Threw it and threw it to the right of Brody. So the inning continues for Fisher. Solid effort there from Rothstein. And at least you get that back up there from Shashati. So on that slide in... Lemaire was not able to advance. But tough play to make. You can't really go to first on that speed down the line from Gucci. You got to go to second, just throw a little bit to the right side of Brody. Bacello is now up for the Cardinals, and that's going to be ruled a hit because of the toughness of that play. Bacello takes it for a ball down and in. It's 1-0. and As you mentioned, tough play for Rothstein. Had to sidearm it on to the bag, and it just sailed wide. One ball, no strikes, two on with two outs. 2-1 Cardinal lead, and that one's inside. It's 2-0. Drodos one out away from getting out of this inning and getting out of a late jam. Two zero is going to be right in there for a strike at the belt, and it's 2-1. Really good 2-0 pitch. You challenge him with that upstairs heater. As watching it was Bacello. Bacello walked his last time. Two and one, ground ball. This time it's going to be a little bit easier of a play to make for the shortstop. Rothstein goes the quick way, 
And there's out number three. Six innings of work for Drodos as the dugout meets him. He allows just two runs. And what a job for the first year. Bombers to the bottom of the sixth. They trail still only one run. Last of the sixth inning here between the Bombers and the Cardinals. Ithaca still trails 2-1. to one. Haven't put anything across since that first inning. But now hoping for a little bit of a spur from the 3-4-5 men in the lineup. As it'll be Curtis, Lobsher, and Shashani do up for the Bombers. First man, Matthew Curtis, had struck out both times. He's come up to the plate. As still on the mound is Tanner Frank. And now they do have men warming in the bullpen. As that's a ground ball to third. Murphy will play on it. Side arms it on to first. One pitch, one out, down here in the sixth. And if you're Frank here on the bump, you're working hard throughout a lot of this game, and, and when you get a first pitch out like that and the Bombers aren't taking pitchers, they're being aggressive in the count, helps you out a lot, especially late in the game like this. And as you said, Toby, no one warming up until right now. A lefty and a righty now in the St. John Fisher bullpen. As Lobsher is single and a ground out to second in today's game, and he takes the first pitch in the dirt in front of the plate, so it's 1-0. As the Bombers have someone warming down in their bullpen after the great performance by Danny Drodos. 1-0 with one out to the cleanup man, Lobsher. Chopper on to third. That one's going to roll foul atop of the bag. So it'll move to 1-1. One and one. Nice sliding stop, though, by James Murphy to try and make a play on it. And a very similar spot to Lobster's double. That one more of a line drive, but just screaming down the line. Murphy certainly thinking about that as he made that play. As the 1-1 is going to be chopped, that one is definitively foul off towards the coach's box, so it's 1-2. and two. And for the Bombers, it's Connor Burns warming up. He's been their closer, 0.77 earn run average. He may have to come in a little bit earlier on in this one. One, two, one out. And that one got him well out in front of the plate. The tag applied by Matthew Arnold, and there's two down. That'll bring up Colin Shashati. He's 0 for 2 on the day with none on and two out. That the fifth strikeout from Tanner Frank in today's contest. Shoddy the righty has grounded out both times he's been up. He shows bunt, and that one trickles foul. We saw Feeney use that small ball back in the fifth inning with that two-out bunt. Shoddy trying to go that way as well, but push it more towards that first base side. 0-1, two outs. Bombers trying to bunt their way on here as taking away is Shoddy. Count goes to 1-1. One Ithaca has had limited action since the third inning when they threatened with a man on third. As the Cardinals have shut him down ever since the first, that one breaks in front of the plate, so it's two and one. Tanner Frank working now through his sixth inning. He's had five strikeouts on the day. 2-1 is upstairs and taking after a bit of a check, it's three and one. Nice hold up by Shashati with Ethan Rothstein waiting on deck. Bombers trying to earn their way on with two outs. That one is taken right off the edge of the plate, and the count runs full with two gone. Frank will try to send it to the seventh inning right here. Full count, payoff pitch with two outs. 
chopper, and that one goes into the Fisher dugout, and we'll do it all over again. Strong long at bat here, and what could be Frank's last at bat of this game where he's gone deep. Frank has held the Bombers in check since the third. That one is inside ball four to Colin Shashati. He works the walk, and now a man on with two gone for Ethan Rothstein, who was last time up, scalded one to the shortstop in Lemaire, who was able to make a play on it. But now the Bombers, as the wind picks up, trying to get something here on the sixth against Frank. Only a matter of time, it seems like, before these bats find something here. There's five pitches in today's contest. Four of them came in that first inning. Excuse me, two of them came in the first, two in the third. As that one's off the plate, it's 1-0. and oh. Leading off of first is Shashati with two outs and action in the Fisher bullpen. Check on Shashati at first, no tag applied as he's back in there safely. And you wonder too, with the, the lack of runners in the scoring position, does Coach Val sent a shit, sent Shashati here and maybe a one strike count? Lemaire and Krantz not moving over as there's another check on Shashati. He's back safely. Have yet to see the arm from Arnold. And you wonder if that aggression comes likely here in bottom six. Arnold has yet to catch a runner stealing all season behind the dish for the Cardinals. He sets up the 1-0, is taken down for a strike, and is 1-1. After back-to-back -back checks on the first base sign for Shashati. Two outs, pitch home is low. And now it's two and one, back to being a hitter's count in favor of Rothstein. Bombers trailing by a run here in the sixth, running out of opportunities, but still only down by a run. Haven't been able to touch Tanner Frank as they check the runner at first again, and back in safe underneath the tag is Colin Shashati. Third time they've looked over to him. And the umpire will call time, and they're going to get a new baseball. As that one got scuffed up in the dirt. And that pitch before, that first strike, and then the pitch right after that, that low fastball was kind of the time for Shashati to steal. If you are going to steal, you're kind of waiting for that 1-1 one, one count. Now he's got it in 2-1. and one. We'll see if they send him. They hold him, and that one is high and right above the helmet of Rothstein as he ducks under it, so it's 3-1. and one with Riley Brody waiting on deck. And now the first baseman, Norsen, will come in and call a mound meeting. And I think they're going to say that clipped him. So on to first, we'll go Rothstein. To second goes Shashati, as they're going to put the runner on first base. And now a meeting at the mound for the Cardinals. Weird that it just clipped Rothstein. It, it really just may have just been off his jersey as the mound visit was coming out, but for Frank right now, you got one more batter. You're going to keep him in right now. Still a righty-lefty, but you're going to face Brody, Schooley, Rodriguez. Bottom three coming up. In the bottom three for the Bombers, they have not managed to hit. Only one of them has gotten on base. That was the error back in the second inning that allowed Scully to get on, and they've amassed two strikeouts. So, so far, good luck by the Cardinals against the Bombers' bottom three. Runner in scoring position for Ithaca for the first time since that third inning as they try to cash in. Brody has flown out twice with two outs and two on. And the speedy Shashati at second base. Third baseman Murphy playing in towards the lip of the grass and there's a strike at 0-1. As Murphy's still shading in. 0-1, two outs, two men on base. Bombers trailing by a run in the last of the six. That one is taken off the plate, and it's quickly 0-2. Frank trying to get out of the jam with two men up in the bullpen, what will likely be his last inning of work. 0-2, two down, two on. Here's the pitch, home swing, and a golf out to right field. That's going to move over Huckins towards the line. And they're going to call it a foul ball. 
that one right into the corner and had it stayed fair, would have given the Bombers the lead. A scalding shot by Brody. Just couldn't get around on it, and he'll return to the batter's box in an 0-2 count. And inches from go even going over the wall to bring in three runs right there and pad onto the lead. Just off maybe a little bit more than base of the wall, three quarters, and then foul. The kind of swing the Bombers want to see from Brody in this moment, they'd like him to replicate it here. Back to an 0-2 count with two down and two on. Frank trying to get out of it with no damage done in the six. And he'll step off and just reset himself mentally. Trying to work. Another pitch for Brody. Sets up high by the Cardinal lettering. And the 0-2 is outside. So it's 1-2. and two. A smart take by Brody not to chase after one away. And he'll live to see another pitch. Staring in Frank, and his one, two home. Swing, line drive, passed into the outfield, that's a base hit. Rounding third is going to Shaddy. The throw home is gonna be cut off, tie game, Bombers. Down to third goes Ethan Rothstein, it's two all, and with two strikes and two outs, Riley Brody delivers. And Brody just missed one before to right field. This one, he got his hands through the baseball on an inside pitch and did his job to right field. Shaddy on his horse, and now a chance here for Logan Scully. He's reached base one, still looking for his first hit of the season. Come, could come here at a big spot. First Bombers run since the first inning. They have tied it up here on the sixth. Those runners at the corners, and two gone. Scully, first pitch, he hits a little looper right to the shortstop. That's going to be playable for Lemaire, and the inning is over. But the Bombers tack on a run. They have tied it at six all. As we head to inning number seven, they could be going to the bullpen right here. We'll be back, a 2-2 ball game heading into the seventh here on Bombers Athletics. The Bombers tied up at two on the RBI single from Riley Brody. And we headed the seventh here from Freeman Field, Ithaca's home opener here in 2024. Danny Drodos in his first career start goes six innings, five hits, two earn, one walk, and seven Ks, and gives way to the righty sophomore Connor Burns. He'll face seven, eight, nine. Here's the catcher, Matthew Arnold. First pitch fastball low from Burns. Burns 11 and two third innings pitch so far this season has three saves. The righty works from the stretch. 1-0 pitch, line drive deep right field. Just Shaddy goes back on it and makes the basket catch about three steps in front of the warning track for out number one. And a few innings earlier, we might be talking about the sun in that setting. Now it's starting to dole down out there a bit easier for Shaddy to make that play. And in this game, close ball game, late innings, they're going to go to their best pitcher out of the bullpen and let the bats try and pick him up. Here's the righty, Benjamin Huckins. One for two so far. First pitch fastball above the letters. And that big pop fly to Shaddy was costly. They ruled it a hit. It dropped in right center field, almost tipping off his glove, battling the sun. 
Burns is 1-0 to Huckins. This one low in the dirt makes it 2-0. and And as we said with Burns, only one run allowed in his 11 and 2 thirds innings pitch. He's been the Bombers' closer. He has the high leg kick from the stretch. 2-0 pitch, and this one off the helmet of Huckins. Second time the Bombers have hit a batter this afternoon and gives way to Jimmy McCradle. And then Jake Kranz to follow 9-1-2 here. So the Cardinals now with their lead, or the run that would take the lead off first base now in Huckins. Yeah, and it was 7-8-9 and nine who set the table back in the third inning for Fisher that allowed them to take the lead in this ball game. Their two runs came in that frame to first the bottom pitch, of the order. First pitch to the lefty McCradle. This one just clips the zone. One for two so far from McCradle. Singled and scored back in the third. Pick over here from Burns and back safely is Huckins. That win picking up here from Freeman Fields as we head to the top of the seventh inning. Here's the 0-1 pitch, now 0-2. Fastball right down Main Street there from Burns. Two-step lead over there for Huckins. Burns on the first base side of the rubber. Picks over once again, lobs with the tag. Not in time. That one a little closer, but you can tell right now, maybe just trying to mess with the timing of McCradle. McCradle digs back in, 0-2 pitch. This one poked out of play over the third base dugout of the Bombers. Rodriguez about a step back on the infield grass at third. Rothstein and Brody pinch up the middle looking to turn two. Ithaca did end the third on a 6-4-3 double play. McCradle widens the stance with two strikes. Burns set, glove of the belt. 0-2 pitch, ground ball at second. Brody picks it up. On to second for one. Rothstein to first. And this time, not a 6-4-3, a 4-6-3. That ends the inning right on cue. And Connor Burns, one inning of work out of the bullpen. And through six and a half here from Freeman Field, Ithaca and St. John Fisher tie that two here on Bomber Athletics. Well, the Bombers tied it at two in bottom six. We now head to bottom seven here from Freeman Field. And St. John Fisher is done with Tanner Frank. The starter was flawless in his third start of the season. The right-hander went six innings for St. John Fisher on five hits and the two runs that came in from Frank. But now Connor Walker on the mound here. The 6'2", 205, sophomore righty, a 4.91 ERA so far. He's 0-1 has started one game on five appearances, 11 innings for him on 12 strikeouts to six walks, so control's not been a problem. And he'll face 9-1-2 here in the Bombers' order, Nate Rodriguez, Colin Feeney, and Luis Fabo to the plates. The Bombers are going to have the people they want up in this frame, 9-1-2, and two, even though Rodriguez over to the top of the frame has been getting it done for Ithaca. So if Rodriguez can find something here, might be able to set the table. Rodriguez 0 for 2 so far, ready on ready. First pitch, this one inside of the fastball. And Walker, that tall stature, almost cocks back on that right hand, turns away his shoulder from the hitter. Rodriguez, the wide ready stance. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fastball at the belt, the called strike. 
Only two extra base hits on the season allowed from Walker. Rodriguez, not a hit yet this afternoon. Golf set this one, and Thousand in the box makes it one and two. Turned his whole entire front shoulder out, was looking to send this one to Cayuga Lake in left field. And that was one where he had his mind made up before he could really get on that pitch. As that one hit well in front of the plate, nothing he could do with it. Walker sets up from the stretch. High leg kick, one, two, ground ball at third base. Murphy picks it up, bobbles, now fires, and gets Rodriguez by two steps at the bag for a big out number one and Walker's first batter out of the bullpen. And now Colin Feeney to the plate, top of the order for Ithaca. This has been a really busy day for James Murphy, even though the stat line only has him getting a couple of ground balls over there. He's had to face a few of them right on line drives, and he's done a really good job sizing them up and making good plays right on that line. Feeney, three for three so far, scored back in the first. And one of those hits, a bunt single, so Murphy in at third base. First pitch to the lefty, bounces out of the glove of Arnold for a ball. And that bunt from Feeney was with two outs. Murphy was about four steps back on the, back on the dirt. Now he probably has his toes right on that infield grass, about three steps away from the back. Walker's one out of Feeney, this one in the dirt once again, makes it two and out. And that's the danger of Colin Feeney. He can drop a button with his speed. If you're playing too far back, he'll get on. And that was the th problem that Murphy had in that one. He was just too far back, and nothing they could do on that play. Now trying to take the bunt away. Walker sets up. Feeney shows bunt, pulls back. It's a called strike on the inner half. Feeney's average now way above 315 coming in. As eight RBIs looking to start a rally here in bottom seven as St. John Fisher and Ithaca tied at two. Walker glove with the belt. 2-1 pitch, Feeney a pop fly high in the infield on the left side. Murphy at third calls everyone off. He makes the two-handed grab for out number two. And first time Feeney has been retired in today's contest. Big second out for Walker and the Cardinals. And that'll bring Favo up with nobody on in two outs. Kind of the last spot he'd want to be in. Favo, 17 RBIs. That's second on the team. Two home runs and five doubles. He's one for three so far with a double. That came back in the third. First pitch to the righty, and the All-American last year is outside, 1-0. Oh. Yeah, one hit now, just two shy of that 200 hit mark. Would be fifth all-time on the Bombers list. 1-0, oh, look out. Fabo ducks away from the fastball, makes it 2-0. Oh. And yeah, we see in the later innings a little more wild pitches from both of these arms out there on the mound, just trying to locate and in the bullpen. Not necessarily the same caliber of pitcher you're getting from Burns as you're getting from Walker. Two balls, no strikes, two away. Here's Walker's pitch. Fabo clips this one back towards us, and this one over the head and towards the football field right above Toby and I. Not enough to get into our little area. I could move myself a little bit if I wanted to make the play. Probably a little bit too high. Makes it a 2-1 count here to Fabo as Walker kicks and fires. Fabo check swing on the off speed. He went around as the home plate umpire. And now Walker one strike away from forcing a 1-2-3 here in bottom seven. Yeah, and just some undisciplined hitting from the Bombers in this inning. They swung up one right in front of the plate, and that one, one that was on top of the plate, went around on. Walker takes a deep breath. Fabo widens the stance. 2-2, Two -two, this one, high drive, left field but shallow. Gucha comes all the way in, now full sprinting, and he makes the catch. The shortstop in Lemaire was going back. Gucha called him off, and it's a 1-2-3 bottom seven for Connor Walker out of the bullpen. And your score still tied at two between St. John Fisher and Ithaca. Someone's got to give. Eighth inning coming up here from Freeman Field.
We head to the eighth inning here from Freeman Field in Ithaca Baseball's home opener here in 2024. We got a good one. St. John Fisher and the Bombers tied at two here in top of the eighth. And it's top of the order for the cards. Jake Krantz, Nick LaMare, and Brian Norson do up. Connor Burns' first pitch. Fastball clip foul in the box. And as we said with Burns, second inning now out of the bullpen. He's been the closer this season. Three saves in the appearances in 11 and two-third innings pitched. He gave way for Danny Drodos, who went six innings in his first career start. Crans the righty, digs back in. 0-1 pitch, a wave and a miss. Golfing out the off speed, it's 0-2. And, and great job right now by Burns, who are down in the zone, getting this leadoff man in Crans to try and fish it out and golf it in the air. Crans is one for two. Had a double back in the third inning. 0-2 pitch, this one clipped foul towards the backstop. And he once again went low. This time, Krantz just got enough of it to hit it onto the backstop. But great mix by Burns there, keeping it low. Went to a fastball to begin the A-B. He sets for the stretch here on the 0-2. Here's the pitch, an off-speed block from Scully behind the dish. Six hits for the Bombers, five for St. John Fisher. The Cardinals had that two spot in the top of the third, no run since. The Bombers had one that came in the sixth. 1-2 from Burns, swing and a miss. Went to the heater, and there's one away on his first punch out. Yeah, second of the game against Krantz by this Bombers pitching staff, and he worked low in the zone, and that one just elevated it. Nothing Krantz could do but swing right through. Here's the two-hitter in Nick LaMare, batting 347. His reach base twice, he's one for two. He shows bunt, pulls back, burns his first pitch in the attic. But this is the part of the order for St. John Fisher you want. Lamar and Norson both batting above 350. Norson batting 427. Burns is 1 0 back to the off speed. This one at the belt. Evens it at one apiece. Yeah, and Lamar's got speed, and that's why they're not too concerned with him dropping down that bunt, even though the third baseman, Rodriguez, playing all the way in, got nine steals on the year. His toes on that infield grass, middle infield back, as the 1 1 is up and inside on off speed that just hung upstairs. And back to Danny Drodos, the freshman. Had seven strikeouts in six innings. The Bombers, you 10 pitchers this weekend, needed this from their pitching staff. As a line drive from LaMare, left field down the line for a hit. Fabo cuts it off down the line and will hold LaMare to a single as he puts the brakes on at first base. And a one-out base runner and the go-ahead on the bags here for the Cardinals in the top of the eighth. And that one was a scorcher, but he hit it just a little bit too hard as a drop in front of Fabo. He's going to have to hold up at first, but as we were just saying, nine steals on the year, and with Norson due up, dangerous spot for Ithaca. The big righty digs in, burns the slide step, ground ball at third, Rodriguez picks it up, on to second, no. He bobbled the baseball and lost it out of his hand. Was almost going to say three times the charm. The Bombers have ended two innings here this afternoon on double plays, a 6-4-3, a 4-6-3, and looking for the 5-4-3. Rodriguez had it. But then lost the baseball. First error of the game for the Bombers. And now first and second here for St. John Fisher. Yeah, and he tried too quickly to make that transition and just could not hold on to it. The four-hitter and James Murphy, the righty. First pitch from Burns. This one is at the knees on the heater. A called strike. What a big spot for the Cardinals here on the road. Tied at two. One away, two on. Pitch to Murphy. Back in the zone from Burns. Went to the off speed and makes it 0-2. And right now you want an out. Any kind of out, ground out, fly out, just a way to get it to two down with Murphy up and getting to Gucha. Burns steps off, looks back the runner at second base in Lemaire as the middle infield's pinching. Two on, one out in a 2-2 game. Burns from the stretch, two looks at second, the slide step. The pitch spiked into the dirt, blocked from Scully. Nobody moves on a big block there from the sophomore catcher, saving the advancement of both runners. And now you hear the dugout giving him props on that one. Just got his left shoulder in front of it and allowed it to go in front of the plate rather than behind him. Murphy wants his first hit of the afternoon. He's 0 for 3. Would be a big one. Burns, the 1-2, chopper third base side and foul towards the bullpen. And you think too, Toby, with the pitchers 10 used this weekend, Burns might have to finish out this game the best he can. Also the Bombers' best pitcher, him and John Griffin out of the bullpen. Yeah, if you're Ithaca, you know you've got that important RIT series coming up. They may have a turn two opportunity here. Rothstein, Brody, Lobsher, in time! 6-4-3.
Connor Burns forces the ground ball. Rothstein, what a play on a hot broadie. The smart throw in Lops for the stretch, and that ends the threat here in the top of the eighth. So St. John Fisher had the go-ahead on second base, but that will end it here in top eight. The Cardinals not happy, but the Bombers want to get happy. Bottom eight coming up, Ithaca looking for the lead. Well, the Bombers forced their third double play of the afternoon to get out of the top of the eighth inning and stop the St. John Fisher threat to keep this game tied at two. We head to bottom eight here in the home opener for 2024 Bomber Baseball alongside Toby Zabore. I'm Cam Mana with you in a good one. Six hits for both teams, one error for both teams, and those two runs, it's been even as Connor Walker out of the bullpen here for a second inning of work. He'll face three, four, five. Matt Curtis, the first man he sees. Ready on righty, and down Main Street for a fastball on the first pitch. Exactly the part of the order the Bombers won up. Although Curtis hasn't produced today, this is the spot that can. 0-1, Curtis, a pop fly high on the infield towards foul territory. Third base side, Murphy at third comes in, he makes the catch. About five steps in front of the Bombers' dugout for out number one. And Curtis now 0 for 4. Came into the game batting 369, not able to produce this afternoon, and gives way to Ryan Lobsher, who's one for three. Yeah, Lobsher doubled back in the first inning, struck out his last time up. But you always want the cleanup man up in the biggest spots, and here it is, bottom eight tie game. Ready on ready, Walker from the stretch. First pitch, Lobsher, deep drive right field, but hangs up in the air with the wind, and Huckins makes the catch for out number two. So two quick outs here for Connor Walker. He had that one, two, three in the seventh, and looking to put the Bombers down in order here as the five hitter in Collins' just shaddy comes to the plate. Yeah, and right now it's just a bullpen game. How long can these relievers go? And how much can they give you? We talked about in the last half inning, Bombers have an important Liberty League series coming up. Walker to Shashaddy, first pitch bunt, third base side, charging as Murphy throw to first in time. Got to Shaddy by a step. Walker's second straight 1-2-3 inning. St. John Fisher loves it. The energy out of their dugout. And this game tied at two, heading to the ninth. You got to love it here for the home opener. Ithaca and St. John Fisher. A game that will be decided in the final innings to all top of the ninth with Connor Burns back on the bump. What will be his third inning of work for the Bombers after getting a double play to get out of a jam in the last half. And the Bombers will face 6-7-8 due up here for the Cardinals. Excuse me, 5-6-7. It's going to be Dominic Gucha, Brendan Bacello, and Matthew Arnold, the catcher. 
As the first pitch to Gucha, he takes a strike, it's 0-1. He's been caught looking twice, had a single in his last at-bat in the sixth. Bombers came back to tie it in the sixth inning. Nothing sense in the bullpen as it's up high, 1-1. One and 1-1 one. And one, one for the Bombers, don't forget, was on a pass ball from Arnold when Feeney was on second, came around and scored. 1-1, one, one, that's an off speed that just misses away, so it's 2-1. and one. Similar opportunities for both teams on the offensive side of this game, and both sides have missed out with some chances. Gucha trying to lead it off right as that one's taken up upstairs. It's 3-1, and one. nearly wore that one. And now a chance to get the leadoff man on for Fisher. They've only done that once in this ball game. 3-1, that one is scolded out to right field, but it's twisting into the bullpen, and it's a full count. And the lefty, Sean Kelly, the senior, also warming up for the Bombers. At 6-2, brings some size out of the bullpen as a strong off speed. That would be a break glass kind of emergency. They want to ride Burns for as long as he can go. That one's upstairs, the leadoff walk for Dominic Gucha. Back-to-back -back times, he has reached on base, and a man on, nobody out for Brendan Bacello. But if you're Coach Valicente and he can't put Bacello down here and you get first and second at maybe the very worst, if he can get on base, that's where you may have to pull the trigger. Burns usually a shorter reliever out of the bullpen with those save opportunities. And you get that fresh rest from Kelly out of the bullpen. Well, Ethan Fulton is on as a pinch runner. He's got two stolen bases on the season. So clearly bringing in speed to try and face Burns. They're going to check him quickly. There's a tag and he's safe. Bang, bang, play, back in time was Burns. If you're Fulton at first base, you can't even be close. You just got on the bags. You got to be a little bit smarter than that with your lead. They got him safe. Try to pick off again, back to back, that one a little less close. I don't really understand, Toby, how it's this close, though. He should, he's got to be a little bit more conservative. Burns waits. He will go home with this one. Runner holds high, 1-0. and oh. And Burns as well goes with a slide step on almost every pitch, so not going to give a good opportunity for Fulton to steal. Fulton, two steals coming into today's contest, and that one's a strike. Right around the belt, so it's 1-1. One and one. With Fulton, the pinch runner, down at first base, coming in for Gucha. That's another check. Tag will not even be close to in time. As the Bombers trying to catch Fulton sleeping. They almost had him earlier. No chance. That one is golfed in the air. Left center field. Moving over Fabo and Feeney. It's going to be Feeney, the center fielder, who charges in on it. Makes the catch for out number one. So one man gone with the seven man Matthew Arnold due up. And a much needed out there. And you talk about double plays, three en inning ending double plays for the Bombers defense. And a spot here against a guy like Matthew Arnold, 0 for 3, or a pinch hitter, excuse me. Yeah, Jake Meeker comes on as the pinch hitter, and he fouls that one in the backstop. It is 0 and 1. Meeker hitting 256, the lefty on the season. He's got 10 hits, 8 RBIs coming into this ball game. So they replace the lefty catcher with the lefty pinch hitter. And that one is low for a ball. It's one and one. Mika, runner on first, one out. They haven't checked back in this plate appearance. That one is a little away, two and one. And looking back, Scully did for the runner. And if you're Burns here, you do not want to overthrow. Mika, a pinch hitter off the bench right now. Got to get this in the zone and look for any kind of out. Mika facing a 2-1. Count one out, fouls that one back into the netting, and it's two and two. The 15th appearance of the season for Meeker. Two, two, one out, runner on first. From Burns, the pinch hitter Meeker, check on the runner at first. He's back safely as the ball popped out of the glove of Ryan Lobsher. Count stays two and two to the lefty Meeker. Here's the pitch. That one is right on the plate. Got him. 
Meeker caught looking, and the pinch hitter is rung up two outs for the Bombers. Meeker did not love the call, but what a pitch from Burns. Brought all the heat on that fastball, painted up inside. Got to give credit to Scully on that paint. Maybe just on the border, Meeker does not get the call, and there's two away. As Benjamin Huckins will climb in with two outs and a runner on first, takes it high, ball one. Huge strikeout for Burns as he caught the lefty pinch hitter looking. Now it's up to Huckins. He was hit by a pitch this last time, also has a hit in this ball game on one in the dirt. He holds up and it's 2-0. and Good check. He was part of a double play last time on base after the hit by pitch. Two balls, no strike, two outs, and he takes that one right on top of the plate. It's two and one. The pinch runner just waiting off of first and Fulton. They're going to check him again. No tag is that one just backhanded by Lobsher in front of the bag. Here's the 2-1. That one is inside, 2-2. Two and two. Huckins has not moved the bat off his shoulder in this at-bat, and it's deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, top of the ninth. Two all score, runner on first. Here's the pitch. Burns line drive, and that's going to get through the left side. A base hit past the glove of Rothstein, holding up at second is Fulton, and the Cardinals will bring it to the nine-hole hitter in McCradle. And what a swing there from Huckins. The Bombers dug out on their feet, clapping. Burns goes to the fastball. This one, he wanted to go to the outside corner, missed down the middle, and Huckins made him pay with a big two-strike, two-out single. And McCradle, who has one hit so far in that rally in the third, comes up in a big spot. A hit here would give the Cardinals a lead. Most likely that one popped foul left side, and that one's on its way over towards the dirt gravel lot. So it's 0-1 quickly. Cradle, after that single, has struck out looking and grounded into a double play. Trying to give the Cardinals the lead in the top of the ninth. That one hits in front of the plate. Good block by Scully, and he keeps it right to his left. Runners have to hold. It's a 1-1 count. Really big block from Scully. Did that back in the third when there was more of that threat, and the Bombers only allowed two runs. He's done a great job behind the dish. Held him on here, first and second in a 1-1 count with two down. And that one's well high and away. Scully has to rein it back in. It's 2-1. and one. Playing in at third base is Nate Rodriguez trying to take away a bunt. Outfield a bit in. That ball is golfed out to left field. It's going to move over Fabo, and he will settle under it. Makes the catch out of the jam. Goes Connor Burns. Bombers go to the bottom of the ninth, tied at two all, looking for a party here on Bombers Athletics. Bottom nine, 2-2 two, two all, Bombers and Cardinals here in the Ithaca home opener from Freeman Field. Into left field goes Ethan Fulton for the Cardinals after he pinch ran in the top of the ninth. Ithaca will have the six, seven, eight men due up. It's Ethan Rothstein to start off the frame against Connor Walker. Rothstein has been plunked today. He also lined out right into the glove of Lemaire on a great defensive web jam. 
That one is taken off the plate. It's 1-0. and And Jake Meeker also behind the plate on the St. John Fisher side as he pinch hit for Matthew Arnold. New battery, at least in the play discipline, as that one's inside, but it's a strike. It's 1-1. One and one. Both teams riding win streaks entering today. Four for the Cardinals, five for the Bombers. Here in the bottom of the ninth, 2-2 two, two all. As the 1-1 one, one is going to be ground ball the third for Murphy. Murphy's going to have to make a tough play, and I can't barehand it. Safe is Ethan Rothstein as Murphy tried to barehand it. The only option he had was to barehand and make a tough throw. No play, and the leadoff man is on for Ithaca. And we'll see if they try and pitch runner. And Rothstein gets his first hit of the day as well and brings up Roddy, who had a great swing in his last day being the sixth, a rope down the right field line. They're going to keep Rothstein on at first base. He's three for three on stolen base opportunities as Riley Brody steps in. He shows bunt. Pitch was way upstairs. Charging in on it was Murphy. It's 1-0. and oh. And that play for Murphy, too, you think the bare hand's the right play, but at the same time, too, you wonder if you got that quick glove in transition, would it be possible for Silver Rothstein? 1-0 shows bunt. That one's going to be hit on a line. Foul. It's 1-1. One and one. A dangerous play. As moving over was Norson, if Norson was able to glove it, there would have been one gone. But instead, it's a harmless strike for the Bombers. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Leading off our first, Ethan Rothstein. And a tie game in the bottom of the ninth. That one is taken for a strike, and it's quickly one and two. The leadoff man reached on a single, as it is ruled a tough play by Murphy to make. He's now playing in the lip of the grass, swinging a pop-up left side into foul territory, chasing after it is Murphy and the new left fielder. They're going to give up as it goes out of play. So staying alive is Riley Brody. And the one thing for Brody here, too, is you want to try to just put this ball in play. He has that speed, and he's seen the ball a lot better. The inner half for Brody, his pull ability and the quick hands he has to bring one towards the right side in the right field. He's put it in play every time he's come up to fly outs in that single. The 1-2, swing and a foul ball back into the netting. Just got a piece of it, but it'll stay alive nonetheless. And Scully and Rodriguez to follow. Scully with no hits so far this season. He's 0 for 3 as well as Rodriguez. 1-2, swing and a miss. He got him. There's out number one. A huge punch out for Walker. And one man retired. And the Bombers are going to bring a pinch hitter up. It's going to be Ethan Dadavo. He will climb into the box, the lefty, hitting 273 on the year. Six RBIs coming into today's contest. And he's going to try and spur something on as Scully finishes day 0 for 3. The dab of the pinch hitter takes it just outside. It's 1-0. And a strong day for Scully on the defensive side, though. You have to give him credit there. A really good job and a lot of big blocks down the stretch. His body kept the Bombers in this game. As he'll take it right at the top corner of the zone. It's one and one. Dabo, one, one, one out runner on first. And he takes it low and away, so it's two and one. 273 on the year, 440 on base coming into today's contest. Now in is a pinch hitter. With speed on first as the infield drawn in at the corners, there's a strike and it's 2-2. Two and two. Outfield appears to be in and left as Fulton trying to take away a double. 2-2, one gone to Dabo, pinch hitting in the eight hole. That one is going to be hit on a ground ball for the second baseman. He's going to go to second for one, on to first, and it's not in time. No double play. Bombers stay alive. Krantz, good turn to get the lead runner, but Lemur can't get him out. And now runner on first, two outs, ninth inning, and scheduled, and coming up to hit is Nate Rodriguez. The third baseman who was penciled in at the last minute to hit now has a chance with two outs and a runner on to end this ball game. And a long relief appearance here for Walker in his third inning. He's bared down and kept that composure. 
And Dabo leads off of first as that pitches down and in from Walker to Rodriguez. It's 1-0. And if you're Rodriguez, all you got to do is really get on right now. Feeney's seen the ball really well. He's on deck with three hits, and then Fabo and Curtis to follow. 1-0 is going to be a ground ball for the shortstop. Lemur makes the play. He'll go the short way on to second. Bit high, but the out is made. Extra innings in order from Freeman Field. Bombers and Cardinals to all as we head to the 10th here on Bomber Sports. The Bombers' home opener here in 2024 has been a thriller. We have extra baseball from Freeman Field. The Cardinals and the Bombers tied at two. The first nine cannot do it. And the 10th inning here brings the top of the order for the Cardinals in Jake Krantz, Nick LaMare, and Brian Norson to follow, and Connor Burns and his third inning work out of the bullpen. We've talked about his name on the year 11 and two third innings pitched. Three saves and maybe one of his biggest appearances, his longest for sure so far this year, and has to get through the top of the Cardinals' order to send us to bottom 10. They've asked him to do more today than they've asked him to do all year, and so far he's answered the call. Krantz, one for four so far. First pitch to the righty is a swing and a miss of the heater. And his last two have been strikeouts. Burns got one of those, so he's hoping to double him up here. He singled back in the third inning. Burns from the stretch, high leg kick. This one chopped in the box. One of the first times we've seen Burns go back to that leg kick, he's used that slide step for the majority of his outings. Yeah, and a good job there on the mound right now. He's really composed. His pitch mix is done well, and he's kept it down in the zone against this top of the order. Burns sets up here from the stretch, glove of the belt. 0-2 pitch, pop fly, shallow right field. Shaddy now takes two steps back, settles under it, and battles the sun for out number one. Sun a lot more forgiving in the 10th inning than it was in the second inning. That one was a bright spot out there early. Now, a little bit easier for Shashati to read it out of the sky and a big first out for Burns. Now here's Nick LaMare. He has two hits, has reached base three times, hit by pitch in the sixth. Another righty on righty matchup. First pitch up and inside, but clips the inside corner for a strike. And as we said, LaMare, one of the four hitters batting over 330, 347 with four doubles as the 0-1 comes in just inside. Even Dadabo now doing that catching. Pinch hit for Scully in the bottom of the ninth inning. Reach on the fielder's choice. Burns high leg kick. Fires the 1-1 off speed right down Main Street. And it's a 1-2 count with one away. Brian Norson to follow in this St. John Fisher order. Normal depth for the Bombers defense here in the top of the 10th. Burns, 1-2, dribbler first base side, and it will trickle foul. And a good job by Lemaire just to get the front of his bat on top of it and squib it foul. He'll stay alive in this spot and face another pitch from Burns, and you got to think Burns starting to tire. This will definitely be his last inning of work. Two strikeouts so far for the ready Burns and the sophomore. Top and saves for the Bombers. 1-2 pitch. Just going to miss on the outside corner. Almost at his third punch out for strike three. And 
home dugout wanted that one more than anything. They'll have to settle for a 2-2 count. And Burns do it this time. 2-2 pitch, ground ball, first base side, into right field, past the diving lobster for a base hit. So the go-ahead run for the Cardinals on the bags with one out in Nick LaMare. And here's their top hitter batting 427, Brian Norson to the plate. And how about this four times reaching in a row for LaMare? So far, though, he hasn't been able to come across the plate, but for Norson, you got to think, a player of his caliber, 0 for 4 with an error, that's going to change. Here's the tall righty. First pitch, check swing, he went around. It was an outside fastball that Burns has gone to almost on every one of his first pitches. Middle infield pinching. The Bombers have ended three innings via the double play. 0-1. This one dips low on the heater. Going back to that play by Lobster, he just tried to dive right on top of it, but it rolled under his glove. Nothing he could do in that spot. A great piece of hitting from LaMare. Burns, 1-1, line drive, left field. Fabo comes in, drops down for a base hit. LaMare to second, Norson, his first hit of the afternoon is a big one. And the Cardinals first and second with one away. And here's James Murphy looking to give St. John Fisher the lead. No move to the bullpen yet from Coach Valsenti. But going out to have a talk is the catcher trying to settle down Burns. He's done well to this point, but now Fisher two on with one man out. And big spot here for Murphy. He's grounded into one double play already today. The Bombers trying to get out of this frame and send it to their bats in the 10th. And we've seen a double play, 6-4-3, 5-4-3, 4-6-3. It's been there for the Bombers. Can they do it again? Norson off first, Lamare off second, Murphy the batter. It's a ready on ready as Burns steps off for the first pitch. Rothstein and Brody up the middle. Brody holding on the runner at second base. Here's the first pitch to Murphy. This one foul tipped and rolls to the backstop. And he was just out in front of it, flat-footed, tried to get under it and send it in the air, but instead just dribbles it back to the backstop. The Bombers dug out into it here on an 0-1 count. Here's the pitch, line drive, right field to Shaddy going back towards the line. It's over his head against the wall. The runner on second base in LaMare, he's running slow. Here's the relay throw to the plate. It would have been in time, and there's two runners on third base. Dadabo at third base, looking the runners back, and now everybody's on the bags. Now there's two runners on second base. Norson and LaMare. Dadabo the throw back to first base. Lobster loses it. This is a mess. A runner on first, a runner on second. Lobster tags the runner out at first, now throws home, not in time. Holy cow. St. John Fisher in front, and will break it down. LaMare was on third base with Norson. LaMare was going home, went back to third, so Norson had to go back to second base, and the base runner in Murphy was then caught between first and second. Lobster tagged Murphy out, then LaMare ran home. He scored, and at the moment, St. John Fisher's in front, 3-2. to two. That is heads-up baseball by the Fishers runners because what they did is the runner on third, he went back and held there for as long as possible. Then those middle runners on first and second, they just tried to play go as far as they could, move off the bag and get something over, and eventually the throw over to first, it was a little bit low, and that was just enough to score LaMare. That is heads-up base running by LaMare, Norson, and Murphy. You'll take the out for the run in the 10th inning any day of the week. The umpire's talking here if the runners in LaMare and Norson were on the bag together at third, but that relay throw comes in, and LaMare got a very, very late jump from second to third. He was almost waiting on that sack fly, and then he came off the bag, was rounding third, stopped, and that's where Norson was with him, probably about five feet right off third base. Yeah, and for a while there were two right there, and that's what the, what the conversation about. Did Norson get to third at the same time as LaMare? Were they on separate bags? Strong swing from Murphy, though, down the line. And the call will stand. So the run scores here for St. John Fisher. They take a 3-2 to lead with a one out here on the top of the 10th. And it gives way to Ethan Fulton. His second A-B, the pinch hitter off the bench for Dominic Guccia. But Murphy gets the RBI. He's out. LaMare scores, Norson on third with one away. First pitch to the lefty, Fulton, is a called strike. 
That's going to be one that I don't have to go back and read the box score to f fully score that one. There's a lot of sevens, a couple twos in there. 0-1 oh, to Fulton is upstairs from Burns, and it was so hectic, and then Lobster had the right play. He said, I, I can get this tag here, watch LaMare back, and LaMare had that a great jump once Lobster tagged him out. 1-1 one, one pitch, dips low, Fulton holds back, they check down, he did not go around. Ten hits now for the Cardinals here on the road, riding a four-game win streak. The Bombers riding high with five straight conference wins. Two balls, one strike, two away, runner 90 feet away. The pitch from Burns. This one a called strike on the outer half. Evens it at twos. Fulton walked to lead off that ninth inning off the pine. He waves his bat twice, Burns set from the stretch. 2-2, two -two. this one just upstairs on the fastball. And that will full count. Would be big here for Burns to get out of the inning. Payoff pitch, 3-2, two, two away. Here it is, fly ball, left field, and foul, and sails all the way out of Freeman Field. Good at bat work by Fulton in this one. Runner on third, two outs, and he's just trying to get him in and make it a two-run ball game. Can Burns get out of the jam? The 3-2 once again. A line drive, center field, Feeney towards left center, makes the backhand a grab to end the inning. But what an inning it was, and James Murphy does the job. It will be scored an RBI double, but then Murphy tagged out between first and second, then second and third. Nevertheless, St. John Fisher in front, 3-2. to two. Bottom 10 coming up, last chance for the Bombers here in their 2024 home opener. Last licks for the Bombers in their 2024 home opener against St. John Fisher. The Cardinals riding four straight wins with a 3-2 lead. Ithaca riding high with five straight. Something's got to give here on this Monday afternoon. Top of the order here for Ithaca. Feeney, Fabo, Curtis, two of the three most dangerous hitters in the conference. And Connor Walker, third inning out of the pen here. He'll face that heated top of the order. Third baseman and Murphy already in. Feeney has three hits, including a bunt single. First pitch, an off-speed hangs upstairs from the righty Walker. Feeney doubled and scored one of the two runs for the Bombers in that first inning. Walker from the stretch, high leg kick. Feeney shows bunt, pulls back. Inner half called strike. That's another one of the strengths of Feeney is he's quick. That's why they got him in the leadoff spot. If he gets on first, especially now 10th inning, down by a run, you wouldn't be shocked if they a sent him. Walker sets up first base side of the rubber. 1-1 one, one pitch. Feeney almost jabbed at it. The changeup's low. Count 2-1. Fabo's 1-4. for four. He's on deck. Curtis 0-4. for four. He's in the hole. Walker sets 2-1. Fastball low and inside. Feeney, six for nine on the season on stolen bases. He can move on the bags. We saw with that bunt single. And if he can get on, dangerous things can happen for the Bombers, trailing by one. Walker, a long look in. Sets up, fires. 3-1, called strike as Feeney threw his bat to the third base side. And the Bombers' dugout almost erupted at the ball. And he was ready to celebrate that bat toss, ready to run down to first instead. He's going to have to take another lick up there in the batter's box. And I'm not sure if Coach Valicente is yelling at Feeney or the umpire for leaving the box early or just the inside call from up here. It looks very close. Maybe a little bit, just a tick inside. So now the 3-2. Ground ball. 
Right on the right side, picked up a second from Krantz, fires to first, gets Feeney by a step for out number one. As Coach Valicente walks towards the home plate umpire, he has some words for him. Feeney thought he had a walk. The umpire says no, and the St. John Fisher infield makes that true. And with one away, here comes Lewis Fabo. Fabo doubled back in the third inning, brought in an RBI. And Ithaca needs him on here. That's a big momentum shifter. Instead of a man on, nobody out. It's one out, none on. First pitch to Fabo, dips low from Walker. Walker so far with one strikeout. That came back in the ninth inning. Has yet to allow a run to this Bombers offense. His highlight kick, 1-0 pitch. Fabo is scorcher, but foul. Right at Kelly in the bullpen. He made the glove grab. So 1-1 one, one count with one away. And he hit the ball hard today, but only one hit to show for it, and that was that double where he got caught on second, halfway between the bag and third. 1-1 one, one pitch, Fabo a pop fly. This one foul, first base side, and out of play. St. John Fisher with 10 hits to Ithaca's 7 in his 3-2 game. The Cardinals cut that tie just here in the top of the 10th. Fabo the wide ready stance with two strikes. The pitch, this one clipped him inside. Got him on the elbow, it looks like. And then Fabo will take off all the accessories. We're waiting for a second if it was off the barrel of the bat. I think that's what it was. Fabo staying in the box. This hit off the knob of the bat, says the home plate umpire. And Coach Valicente will come to the plate for maybe another conversation. Tough to see from here, but it certainly sounded like it got his arm, but another big momentum shifter, just like the last one. That one turned into a ground out from Feeney. We'll see what, we, what it becomes here. This one will be a ball, so Fabo will stay alive on a low and outside off speed from Walker. Normal depth for the St. John Fisher infield outfield. Two balls, two strikes, one away as Matt Curtis waits on deck. Walker's pitch. This one low and outside and a full count. The second full count of the inning as there's one pitcher warming up in that St. John Fisher bullpen as the Bombers dug out all on their feet. Favo bat on his shoulder, now picks it up. Walker, a deep breath. 3-2, hard ground ball foul, third base side. Favo, his 18th start of the season, five doubles, 17 RBIs, has done it all since his sophomore year. He digs back in. Waves his bat twice towards Walker. Walker leans in, now stands tall. 3-2 pitch, another scorcher and foul. The third one towards that Bombers bullpen. Fabo just a tick out in front. And this is what you want from Fabo. He's seeing those pitches inside, and he's waiting on one that he wants, but until then, he's driving him foul and next. You're either waiting on a pitch right in his zone, or he's going to take a walk. Fabo steps out, now steps back in the box. What a long A-B here from Walker. The battle between Feeney to lead it off and now Fabo. We'll do it again. 3-2, one away. Here's the pitch. Clip back. It was a fastball in the outer half that Fabo just got a clip of. Again, another one where he's just fighting to stay alive. That was not his pitch. But that was going to be called a strike, so he just had to tip it off. And I'll stay alive. Walker once again, who's going to win the battle? 3-2, ball four up and inside. Tying run on the paths and the go-ahead and the winning run. And Matt Curtis to the plate here with one away. And it's the heart of the Bombers order. Three and four do up. Curtis 0 for 4 in today's contest. you got to think he's due. Same as we were talking about in the last frame with Murphy and Norton, Norsen. It looks like the Bombers are going to bring in a pinch runner. Looks like Colin Dunn, the sophomore outfielder, he can run just like Feeney, two of those outfielders that can move. So Fabo to the bench, Colin Dunn, that tying run, he's on the paths. Matt Curtis will dig in here. One away, middle infield pinching in a 3-2 game here in bottom 10. First pitch to Curtis, some chin music inside, 1-0. The last two pitches that Walker has thrown have both been high to the batters. One strikeout so far and a walk for Walker. 
is 1-0 to Curtis. Ground ball, third base side. It's down the line for a base hit. They call it fair. Dunn steps on second, get in the way into third. Here's the throw from Fulton. It's not in time. Curtis into second with a big one-out double. The tying run 90 feet away. Curtis, the winning run on second base. His first hit after the first four going down. Keeps this game alive for the Bombers. And Lemire was incensed on that play. He thought he was out. Instead, they call him safe. And that is a huge call. One out. And the runs that would tie and win the game are both in scoring position. And the biggest opportunity for Ryan Lobsher of the night. They're actually going to bring in Camden Laney. The freshman first baseman will step in here. Has played in some limited appearances, but has hit so well this season for the Bombers that him and Lobsher have platooned at times. So Dunn at third, Curtis at second. And the Bombers a pinch runner as well here. They will take out Curtis. And they will bring in Luca Pipia. Pipia will come to the game here for Curtis. And Curtis gets mobbed from the dugout. So Laney, the lefty and the freshman steps in here. And they will intentionally walk him. The pinch hitter was intentionally walked to bring up the captain, Colin Shashati, looking to send the Bombers fans home happy in their home opener. That's the right strategical move because it gets a force at any base. Ground ball will end this ball game as long as they can turn it. They're going to have a mound meeting. You wonder if Fisher is going to make a move here. That looks like, though, no coach is out from that dugout. So they're going to stay with Walker. But a force at any base for Shashati, he has walked once, no hits today. And now the coach is out and they're making a move. Time called here for St. John Fisher and they'll go to the bullpen. So Matt Curtis, the big wow double, sends Dunn to third. Curtis now not on second, it's Pipia. He's even jogging towards the outfield right now to stay loose. Laney pinch hit for Lobster. He's at first on the intentional walk. And Colin Chishati to the plate with bases loaded here in bottom 10 when we return on Bomber Athletics. Well, here it is, folks. Base is loaded in the bottom of the 10th inning. Ithaca down 3-2. to two. Matt Curtis with a one-out double. Put the Bombers at second and third. And Laney comes in to pinch it for Lobster. He was intentionally walked to load the bases. And now Christian O'Brien on the bump, the southpaw for the Cardinals. In his sixth appearance, has yet to allow an earned run in four and one-third innings pitched. Only two hits, seven strikeouts, and one walk. Maybe the best Cardinals reliever. And he'll face the captain here in Colin Shashati. Yeah, 154 average against him coming into this performance. Shashati, if he can get a big hit here, biggest moment of the season for him. Dunn's the tying run at third. And then at second base, just 180 feet away, is Pipia. He's the winning run. First pitch is Shashati. This one's outside. 
And if you're just shouting, you want to drive one, you want to get that big hit, but again, even a walk will do something here. So you got to be smart. No, just get on base. O'Brien, the southpaw, sets on a 1 0 count. Can just shatty come up big? Fastball inside corner, a called strike. I mean, the last move they made was the intentional walk. And that set it up. Bases loaded, an opportunity where anything on the ground could end this game. Shoshani's 0 for 3. Can he change it here? The 1 1 up and inside, 2 and 1. Pippi off second. He has the speed done as well off third. The senior in Shoshani, the leader of this team in a big spot, looking to change his afternoon. The 2 1. Ground ball off the leg of Shoshani in the box. It's a foul ball. Evens it to a piece. That is a good call for Shoshani. That one was right back to the pitcher. And if O'Brien got it, he could have gotten home for one. And the way Shoshani was getting out of the box, that would have likely been two. The home opener. A thriller coming down to the wire. O'Brien sets a deep breath with a lefty. 2-2. Two -two. Pop fly first base side out of play. And Shoshani stays alive. And now he's just going to wait for his pitch. You remember... Fabo did that, excuse me, yeah, Fabo was doing that earlier, and then Curtis did it as well before his double. They're just waiting for their pitch now on a 2-2 count, something you can drive. Shoshani battling, winning one on second. 2-2 in the attic, full count. Ethan Rothstein waits on deck, done the tying run 90 feet away. A walk will tie the game. A single would probably win it for the Bombers. They're dug out on their feet. The 3-2 pitch. Shoshani clips it foul in the box, and what an A-B. It started with Feeney on a seven-pitch at-bat. We saw Fabo, he walked on a nine-pitch at-bat, and now Shoshani coming down to the wire here with O'Brien out of the bullpen. Lucky tip, just got in front of it and stayed alive. This could end it in the home opener. 3-2, up and outside, ball four. We're tied at three with one away. The winning run in Pipia, 90 feet away. And here comes the other senior captain and Ethan Rothstein to the plates. Not a hit, but exactly what the Bombers needed. If it's not there, take the walk and bring it up to the next big man in the box. First pitch to Rothstein. This one's fouled back. Rothstein is one for three, hit by a pitch in the sixth, single to the ninth. The team's leader in average at 413. 3-3, three, three, one away here in bottom 10. Can Rothstein win it for the Bombers? 0-1, oh, swing and a miss. Now an 0-2 count with one away as Riley Brody on the on-deck circle of Rithika. Yeah, and in a tie game with one out, the infield all playing in, so is the outfield. Every infielder lip of the grass. Sudden death here for the Bombers. 0-2, oh, grounder first base side, but off the shin of Rothstein in the box. Second time in two batters, we've seen that. A fly ball could win this game. Ground ball, you never know. Pippia has some speed off third base. Now you mentioned a ground ball with the infield in could hurry a throw. Rothstein steps in. O'Brien set. No balls, two strikes, one away. The winning run 90 feet away. The pitch, line drive, center field. Good night from the South Hill. Ethan Rothstein mobbed at first base. The hero and the home opener starts on a high note. Ithaca victorious in 10 innings, 4-3. to three. Bases loaded, one out in a jam. Time to party for the Bombers. Waited for his pitch inside and just let it go. You don't need a big hit. All you need is something that found the outfield grass. What a 10th inning for the Bombers. Down to their last legs, top of the order. And after one out, they work their way. A gritty hustle kind of win. Ethan Rothstein, his second hit of the afternoon. A game that was battled back and forth. Ithaca with the early lead. St. John Fisher in front, two to one. Tied at two until the 10th, and then both teams trade punches, but Ithaca gets, gets the last laugh here in their home opener. And it was bases juice, but that whole inning started from just that one out, one out walk from Fabo, Curtis, and then that whole train just trickled down. Yeah, you start off with the walk, and then things start to get moving. You get one man on, then you get two guys on, and ever, once you do that, you get a rally going, and it's all about mentality. Coming into that 10th inning, they only had 
couple runs in the innings. They couldn't figure things out. The bats came alive when they needed to. Big win for the Bombers. And now a big confidence booster going into the biggest series of the Liberty League thus far against RIT. Another undefeated conference team in a very important conference matchup. The Bombers move to 14-4. They have now won six in a row. And as Toby said, conference play this weekend on the road Friday. And a doubleheader here from Freeman Field on Saturday. But that does it for this one. The home opener was historic. Ithaca down to their final few strikes. And Ethan Rothstein, the walk-off single, sends the Bombers home with a victory. 4-3 to three year final. Thanks so much for joining us on Bomber Athletics. Enjoy the rest of your week. For Toby Zabore, I'm Cam Anna saying goodnight.